Hello, this is Adam with Dream Made Productions. This video is made possible by the very kind donations of viewers like you. Thank you. If you are in a position to help this channel improve quality and grow, please visit my Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash dreammadeproductions, linked below. It is the 31st century, and mankind is once again at war. The battlefields of the future are dominated by huge robotic war machines known as battle mechs. So, I don't normally do this kind of thing, but a while back Battlebound covered one of my favorite Battletech videos. That's the opening of Mech Commander. It's such an awesome video that gives you such a great feel for the universe. So that's about it. If you guys want to go over and... The hell? Shit, we got movie time! Movie time! Movie time! All right, here we go. Oh yeah, micro pro. <laughs> this takes me way back. Like oh, yes. super way back. <laughs> I remember when this came out, I was so excited about it. I called up my friend. Oh, I was excited too. Um and this little intro here is one of my favorites, showing the actual, like, space part of the invasion. I used this as the, as a video for the ending of my Planet of David campaign. It's so awesome. ...across town and, like, watched it with him on the phone and, like, held the phone right up next to the speaker so he could hear it. Like, that's how excited we were about it. I remember the first time I watched this, it was my buddy had the game and was like, oh, you like Battletech. Here, check this out. Delta zone clear. Panther, I need Charlie's own status report. <laughs> Got a raven there. Sir, it's real quiet down All right, here we go. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Don't think, Mech Warrior. Find out. Finish your sweep. Colonel. Best line in the whole intro movie. Commander Harrison, can you confirm Charlie's own clear? I have an invasion to go to. Sweeping last sector now. Wow, that was kind of. Yeah, that pissed her off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. This was so man, irresponsible. Man, that's like a court martial offense here. Yeah, man. She was like, Holy oh yeah, motherfucker. Well, I'll tell you what. Now the entire invasion is on you, buddy. How do you feel about that? Of course, something goes you know, wrong. All right, so they got I really there. want to say that real military commanders wouldn't do stuff like that, but I know better. Commander, I assume you have this under control. Yeah, I assume you'll save my entire career, please, and and not ruin this entire thing that I've just started. This is gonna look terrible on my officer review brief. Ugh. Ooh. All right. All right, got some LRM and a large laser hit. And of, and of course. Hold on, let me hear course. this. All right, so they open up with some weapons there. Medium lasers, AC-20. See how far away that is? And hard cases had it. Full head ejection system there. So they just now identified the Mad Cat. They take off. Avenger and Viper go right. Okay. Alright, he opens up the two large lasers. Now he shoots an SRM too. That's a weird raven. Alright. That cat pilot is just like, you just signed your own death warrant. Miss. Three misses. Wow. Take the turn. Skid check passed. All right, so a missile or uh, something, or another large laser in the rear that hit him in the arm. Skid check passed. Be sure that he has high piloting stats. I know what you Maybe low gunnery. Turns around. Damn it, sir! I need some help. 
here it comes. Ooh, just loaded into the back armor. Just, gah. Finish it. Ouch. Yeah, there's really only one thing I can think of there. I'll wait. Hey, Panther, did you miss us? Commander? Reporting Charlie's in all clear. Nice shooting, team. Harrison. Excellent job. Well done. Now, you saved my career. And like, Mech thousands of lives. <laughs> Form up and look sharp. We have an invasion. Just a hundred? Iconic moment. Absolutely iconic moment. Okay, so can I just say that the invasion so awesome. of Port... Sorry, not the invasion. The liberation of Port Arthur is basically Battletech's Normandy. I can see that. All right. So let's break this down, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Let's back this bad Take boy up to the first instance of, of combat here. Right about here. So we see, you know, our, our buddy hard case here is firing his one of his medium lasers. I mean, I guess it's a medium laser because the small. See, now we're assuming that's a 4G. Uh, probably is. It doesn't look any different. It does look like it's been altered to have a full head ejection system, but... Uh, that might just be, you know, the uh, modeler's idea of what the ejection would look like. A laser's in the head. So if he's if it's coming yeah. out of his arm, it's got to be a medium laser. So that's funny. I always thought medium lasers were green. <laughs> so, depends, okay. on, uh, depends on the developer. And, you know, a few frames later, we have hard case over here. He's blasting away. We don't see. See, now, they didn't catch that, but that's one of the things that is one of my leading theories here. Uh, I think it's hard case. One of them says, sir, they have us ranged. And if you look at what's available here, we've got uh, a hunchback, we've got a centurion, we've got, looks like a commando, and we've got a raven. So, at least from the weapons that we see, we're going to set the raven aside for a minute because it's... I don't know if there's a Raven with an SRM-2. But um, from what we see here, we're packing pretty short-range weapons. Your longest-range weapon that's here is the LRM-10 on that Centurion. And his AC-10 is back from that. On the other side, we have a Mad Cat that has, what, two Clan LRM-20s and two Clan ER large lasers so that makes sense. He would be able to open fire on them long before they would be able to return fire. And there's another reason I think he's at much longer range coming up. See whether or not he hits, but here's what I will say. If we if we Okay, so it looks like the Raven did shoot a medium laser. So I'm going to go ahead and assume this is some sort of maybe a custom Raven. I think that'll make sense later. He's getting blasted here. All right, so he's taking several large laser hits there. Some missiles miss. And down he goes. Now, how would that have to take place? I hear that alarms would... going off in that cockpit. So this is gonna this is gonna say to me he's got engine damage. He's got heat warnings going off because of engine damage. He shoot his auto cannon. He's firing his laser. He's moving. The hunchback doesn't have you know more than just barely enough to, to shoot some of that stuff. So he's probably firing his guns. Bang, got cracked with an engine critical. So let's let's see. Couple of medium lasers. It took some LRM damage there. It could easily be looking at internal structure damage in the center torso if the pilot got the right grouping. Or he could have a, you know, through armor critical. Mad cat pilot roll snake eyes. Boom. Uh, that's possible, too. Not sure. He might have just panicked because they were through his armor, and he was worried about all that AC-20 armor going up if he doesn't have case. Um, 
So, yeah, either he took an engine hit there, possibly a bunch of those LRMs hit a center torso, and some of those large lasers, those clan large lasers hit hard. So it it's possible that he either got a through armor critical or they just ate through and, and popped his engine, which would have knocked his heat up. And, I mean, ejecting in force withdrawal is legit, so... And gets plus one critical, plus two critical, whatever damages the engine, and that sets off these alarms that we hear in the cockpit. So I'm thinking he's got engine damage, and his heat's going wild. He may also have gyro damage. He might not want to stay in with that additional, you know, plus, what is it, three or whatever for gyro damage. So that could be part of it, too, if he took an engine hit and or a gyro hit. And at that point, he would meet the the standards for forced withdrawal. And, you know, he's got to go. So he doesn't want to die. You know, he, he sees he's getting ripped apart. Whew, he, he's out of it. What do you say? Do you concur? I think that what's happening here is you have some really lucky hit location rolls consistently on the part of the Mad Cat. Now, the Mad Cat... I'm assuming that this is a prime configuration, although Met Commander didn't really go with the standard, like, prime configuration versus A, B, C, whatever. Uh, they did, like, okay, so this one has more armor, this one has more weapons, and this one has jump jets. So, if you're dealing with a Just prime configuration at mad cat, plenty of firepower to be able to take a hunchback out in a single turn if you get lucky on the hit location rolls. I don't think this was a single turn. I think this was two or three turns. Hold on, let me see this. Son of a bitch! Sir, they've got us ranged. Get to them. See, sir, they have us ranged. And he tells him, get to them. So, I think that Mad Cat is firing at, you know, medium or long range for its LRMs and ER large lasers. Whereas the Inner Sphere mechs either can't respond at all on the first salvo, or you know, they're at their extremely long range at like nine hexes or something. Can't be allowed to get off a message. You notice the commando doesn't fire at all. Uh, the machine, see, do you see that, that daka 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 right there? That tells me you're looking at a Mad Cat Prime. He's got the machine guns on it. So you're definitely looking at, at two Mad large Cat lasers. Prime. Two yeah, two large, large lasers, two machine mediums, guns, and two LR machine 20s. guns. Don't forget the standard medium pulse disco death laser. Mm -hmm. But he's not in close enough range for that yet. The Mad Cat is firing the machine guns. So for the pilot to even pull that off, the player would have to be within three hexes. You, you don't get range outside of three on tabletop with machine guns. So the fact that the pilot is even doing that to begin with means they are right up next to one another. Like if this was tabletop, you would be what I call within hucking distance or the range is right here. That would See, now this is why I think either one of two things is happening. Either one, that was several turns of them walking towards each other because it, it doesn't look like these mechs are running. It looks like they're walking. And the Mad Cat also looks like it's walking. It doesn't look like it's running. So either several turns went by, and that's why the Hunchback took so much damage. They compressed all of that down into this one exchange where there was more happening that we just didn't see because of camera changes and stuff. Or, I think more likely, the Mad Cat is firing his machine guns not so much for a tabletop reason... And I know this is probably putting more thought into it than it deserves. But think about it from the Mad Cat's uh, point of view. This is Port Arthur. It's an inner sphere of space. It's been conquered. He's on patrol. He finds an entire lance of inner sphere mechs. Now, the inner sphere is not exactly known for playing fair. So, coming up with a reason that the machine guns are firing like that. I would say he's using the machine guns to sweep the area in front of him. There could be infantry hidden in those buildings. He's in a city, which is where infantry is at its most lethal. So he could be firing his machine guns into the street and the surrounding area, basically warding off any infantry from popping their head off and taking a shot with their weapons or trying to swarm him. Whether there's infantry there or not, I think that's a pretty good 
way of handling it because he's not necessarily going to know if there's infantry there. He just ran into an entire lance of inner sphere mechs, which if this was something that his commander sent him out knowing to send one mad cat against an entire lance of two mediums and two lights uh, in a city setting, I, I don't know. That seems like it's an awful low bid if they're expecting this kind of encounter. That's one of the reasons I think he's firing the machine gun. He's firing the machine gun to make sure any infantry keep their heads down. Be, you know, wait, what I say. So this guy, he's getting hammered up close. So, you know what, this makes a little bit more sense now that I analyze it in that. Again, if I don't think it's as up close as they're thinking. If he was more up close, we would expect him to be firing the lasers, at, at, at least the medium lasers, the machine guns, and the pulse lasers. And he's still firing LRMs. Now, LRMs don't have the same problem with minimum range because, you know, clan stuff is bullcrap. But they're still not as heat efficient as firing the uh, the the pulse lasers and we're not seeing a pulse here whether it's the dot 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 of like mech warrior 4 or the streaming kind of laser that you see in mech warrior 3 or the that you see in mech warrior 2 so i don't know i think he's shooting his lrms and his er large lasers at the hunchback because it's frankly the probably the most dangerous mech that's on the field right now and it can't if it can respond at all it can't respond very efficiently because he's at range eight or nine if not more and that's why the hunchback started firing off he's hoping for that 12 because he's at long range that's my theory on it anyway and he's firing the machine guns to sweep the street because you know he doesn't want to get caught with four enemy mechs plus a bunch of infantry shooting at him or wor worse yet coming out and swarming his legs. Passion. So I don't know if I would call this luck on the Mad Cat's part. I don't think that through armor criticals, if you, you know, take them in the center torso, as is written in the in the book, and don't use the floating criticals, <laughs> then um, it's not as uncommon as you think to score a snake eyes on a hit roll especially if he's throwing machine guns if he's throwing missiles we know some of those missiles hit cluster hits are you know the the main source of ways to generate through armor criticals like that and all you got to roll is an eight which i mean you'll hit 42 percent of the time so it's not that unlucky and in the realm of all things that are possible i'd say frankly it's pretty freaking doable so that oh, that's what i think happens on here. top on top of that it actually makes a lot more sense to take the hunchback out now if he's that close. Because you do not want to take hits from that AC-20. No, and I would... Be I think it makes sense to take the hunchback out first almost at any range. Certainly if you're right on top of each other, yeah, it's by far the most dangerous mech. But even if you're not at close range like that as in my theory i would still shoot that hunchback first because the hunchback is the only thing that can kill me in one hit sure a direct hit to the head from that ac-10 you know there's a chance of it destroying the cockpit and it's going to mess you up but you have a much better chance of survival of the ac-10 hitting you several times than that ac-20 hitting you only a few times. There's so many times I've lost a mech to an AC-20 hit to the head, or an AC-20 hit to the rear, or an AC-20 hit to, you know, a leg or a damaged area that just wipes out. It, It's so damaging. I still say that Hunchback is is the most dangerous mech on the field, and that's why he's targeting him first. It's a wise decision. It's the decision I would have made. At my bottom dollar that the clan pilot... Um, being bred for this kind of thing his entire life or her entire life or their entire life um, would know thine enemy and have studied the technical readouts and know what they're looking at when they see it. And they see that big giant 
you know, auto cannon hanging out there on the shoulder, you got to know if if you're a student of the sport that that's a hunchback. Like if you're, yeah, even, you know, knowing your enemy, which is just based. I mean, clan battle computers will be able to tell you that. But, yeah, they're going to study that. They're going to know. I mean, they're going to have the old Star League Defense Force records that will tell you what all of these mechs are. Intersphere mechs have not changed very much. So they're going to know. It's going to be common sense. And, I mean, there's a Hunchback 2C, for God's sake. So, yeah, they're going to know that's an AC-20, and that's the most dangerous thing. Tactics, you'd know. And you wouldn't want to take that 20 cannon. And even without all the studying, every clan mech warrior knows that you do not want to be assigned to the Hunchback 2C. That's a suicide mission. That's when they're trying to get rid of you. So... That's how I think this happened. I think that, you know, you're looking at either some some very good grouping here to get internal to the center torso, couple of engine crits, or you're looking at a through armor critical here to one, maybe two engine hits, and you hear those warning alarms going off, and he meets critical damage, and pow, he punches out. On tabletop, that's how I think this goes. Sounds fair. And All right. I would do the same thing if I was that mech commander. I'd be like, get out of that thing. You're not doing us any more good. So let's fast forward to the next instance of damage here, which is the Raven shoots the Mad Cat. Oh, it's just basic pulling aggro. Now look at him right here. He doesn't look like he has suffered any damage. He does not look like he has taken an auto cannon 20 shell from the, the hunchback, even though it got... Yeah, that was a lot of fire that they shot. You know, we had at least one medium laser from the Hunchback, plus it's AC-20 later. You had an AC-10 shooting from the uh, the Centurion. It looks like there was another medium laser that was shot from the Raven. So, I mean, they, they the only thing that doesn't look like they fired was the Commando. And I think the reason for that was he was literally at range 9. I don't think he was in close. I don't think he was using the machine guns uh, on the hunchback or shooting those at the Intersphere mechs. I think he was really using those machine guns to sweep the streets in case this was an ambush. A shot at him. He looks like he's pristine here. So I'm going to go ahead and just go with the fact that if the hunchback hit him, he didn't hit him with anything significant. And neither did, did anybody else that shot at him. So let's move on. Uh, that was an SRM, obviously, from the, the Raven. I wouldn't expect that paltry burst to show on this frame. So, yep, Raven scores a hit. Very good. Yeah, a couple of points of damage on the uh, right torso. Uh, Mad Cat's still in great shape at this point. Now, he's going to flip around here. I was talking about this while the thing was playing, so let's watch him him run here. Follow this path. Now the Mad Cat missing right there. See now you see the difference in the uh, step there when the uh, Raven was walking before and now he's hauling ass as a run. So that's another reason. I think they were slowly walking towards each other. That's luck. Like they have got to be within one hex of one another at this point if they are not on tabletop at point blank range. I I would consider that a difference of one hex at best. So that missed shot right there is insane luck on the Ravens part because he had barely even moved by that point. So let's move on. Yeah. And he keeps missing. Take the turn. Right here. He's running on pavement. So Yeah, that's a, I don't make skid checks. That's kind of bullshit. I know you're supposed to, but yeah, yeah, it's one of the rules I just kind of overlook a lot of the time because it just slows the game down so much. I'd say the Raven pilot has to be at least a, a pilot of five. I mean, no no worse than that. Maybe four if he's lucky. But uh, you pass a skid check here. So you'll have to roll piloting skill probably plus one at that point because he's traveled a few hexes to get there. So let's just say he's a you know gunnery four, piloting five. He rolls a six. He passes his skid check here. I, Bang! I think he Panther's a better hit. pilot than that. Yep, oh, right to the leg. He pace. may be. It doesn't matter. But he he got he got hit right right there. Right? You you think that's the leg and not a torso? I think that's the leg. 
okay, what do you suppose he gets hit there with? Hits with there a, a missile? That's an explosion. It might have been. It might have been a stray missile, or it might have just been uh, bad animation. Uh, back it up a little bit and let's see that again. All right. Boom. That's a that's a missile that's hit. That's a missile. That's a missile hit. That was a so, terrible roll on his grouping. Oh, I mean, it, it. Yeah, I think that's an animation error. I think that was supposed to be a laser hit. Must have been. It. May, they must have just flown sideways. Let's just assume that the the Raven takes a few points of damage in his leg here from from that missile because he's still moving. It doesn't seem to have affected him at all, and we don't hear any warning alarms in this cockpit. So we'll it just say him forward a little bit. A little bit. So we'll say it's a five point grouping, you know, hits you in the leg and maybe a point somewhere else for the to account for the splash damage. Sound about right? Sounds about right. So he's not hosed yet. Oh no, far from it. Bang. And there Yeah, see I took that as maybe a hit to the arm or rear torso. Maybe the arm, but if that was to the rear torso, that clan large laser should have just blown him in half. So I'm thinking that he took that to the arm, and I'm thinking this is a custom Raven. Because we only ever see him use an SRM-2 and a medium laser. So he may literally, those might be his only weapons. He doesn't have any jump jets. So they might have stripped all the uh, the electronic warfare gear, the ECM the active probe, the narc launcher, they might have pulled all of that out of this Raven and just beefed up the armor. That's one of the things I'm considering as well. Or this is a really old Raven and it's literally still sporting uh, EW gear or something. Um, but yeah, I think this is a is an armored up Raven. And, and there's a laser hit to the torso. That is a medium right. laser. If we're going to go by what the video games had established at that point which was yeah again i don't think so we saw that either clan medium lasers in this are green which might be or if we're working on my theory he's really banking on shooting those er larges so i don't think we see him use in my personal opinion is i don't think we see him use his medium ER mediums or the pulse laser. I think they're further away than the guys are thinking. That's what makes sense to me anyway. Otherwise, he would be using his pulse lasers to try to, uh, you know, get a better hit on this thing. And we don't see pulses used. Medium lasers are green. Because remember, when we played Mech, Mech Warrior 2 and we fired medium lasers, they were green. If you fired large lasers, they were blue, right? So he just got hit with a green bolt of energy. So let's just presume that this is a medium laser based off I'm of what the game to one show of the us. No, that's a that's a clan medium laser. So that'll do seven damage. Okay, seven damage to uh it looks like the right torso, and it might not have exactly been the rear arc, because if it was the actual rear arc, he's already got exposed internals at this point. Oh, there's no way that's not the rear arc. And the the Raven has... See, I disagree. I think it hit his arm, blew his arm off, or disabled it. You know, we are talking this is older animation here, so they might not have been able to do the, the arm flying off or melting or whatever. But we still see it looks like his SRM2 on the other arm. So I think he lost his arm, you know, blew through the arm armor, the arm structure, and the rear beefed up rear armor might have soaked the rest of the damage or it blew through that and didn't take all of the internals of that rear torso. So that's my personal opinion of what's happening here. I think he lost his medium laser in that other arm. And that's why he doesn't fire it when we see him again here in a few, uh, in a few seconds where he shoots at the rear of the Mad Cat. I think he only shoots the missiles because that's the only weapon he has left. Only three points of armor on its left torso. Actually, all of its torsos. So we're going to assume that hits the left torso. That's three. He's internal at this point by about four points of damage. So that sucks. And he's got that XL engine. Man, if he takes <laughs> pretty much any other... 
again, he might not have an XL engine. He might have a standard engine. So we don't know that. Now, the, uh, the configurations, I don't think so. I think this is a custom Raven. And we're seeing pretty much intro level tech on everything else. I really do think that this is a Lance that was sent in with basic level gear. I don't think these are like super commandos with the best of the best here. I think this is all intro level 3039, maybe some 3050 stuff. Like maybe he kicked in mask there and that was one of the reasons that the clan mech was having trouble hitting him. He's further back. You know, maybe at medium range instead of close. And he's hauling ass, holding down the mask, going really quick with that Raven. But, I don't know. I kind of think that he's got a standard engine in that. Your major hit there, that extra light engine would be the end of it. So, when he says, I can't keep up this pace here in a second, he's not kidding. There. I can't keep up this pace. That does make sense, yes. Take the next right. So here's what just happened here. That Raven pilot got insanely... Okay, so that blast that was right there, either that was a pulse laser or that was both ER larges again. So not quite sure what he's doing. Lucky. He passed his skid check because you know at this point he has got to have traveled however many hexes on that movement phase. And he passes his skid check here after traveling, let's say, four or so hexes. Not a hard piloting skill roll. And he's a recon mech too. Um, so he might have odd numbered skill points. Like he might be gunnery five piloting three or something. The pass, it's a standard roll. So you make a five, no problem. But if he hadn't traveled that far to avoid skidding, that means he hadn't moved that fast. And, and the, the mad cat had only just barely missed him. So... Again, insane luck on the Ravens' part. Commander, and here's the iconic I scene. I don't have jump jets. I know what, I know you've, what got. you've got. Hold your position. So, here comes Batty McBatterson. Damn, sir, I need some help. Here it comes. Here it comes. And F okay, so that was a lot of missiles, and it looks like they came from both the Centurion. Let's uh, see if we can't get it here right it on frame here. here it comes. All right, so one of those is a Centurion. The other one's a Commando. See? See the two streams of missiles? I think both mechs unloaded their missiles at the same time. I don't think it's just an LRM-10 hit to the rear. And everything to Boom. the rear arc. Boom. So that's at least one LRM-10 and one SRM-6 and might be either an SRM-6 and an SRM-4 to the rear. Or this could even be the upped gun commando with the two SRM-6s. So that could be a lot more damage. And there was a time there where we zoomed in on the missiles... So he could have also taken an AC-10 hit to the rear. So they might have fired off the missiles and shot other weapons that hit while we were while the camera was focusing on the missiles. I know that's not what we see necessarily, but that could also explain why this is so devastating to the rear. On the mad cat. Oh. So that that that's that's one of those iconic moments. So we've got LRMs. We know that. Uh, we know that that Avenger and Viper got sent that way, and that's a Commando and a Centurion, right? We're dealing we don't, with LRMs and SRMs. Uh, we don't we don't hear any yeah. auto cannon fire here. We don't see a muzzle flash. We don't see any laser fire. So we are dealing strictly with missile fire here. So we're looking. At Possibly, but like I said, we zoomed in on the missiles. The camera focused on the missiles, so it's possible that they fired other weapons too. That's what I would kind of go with, because if you got a rear shot on a clan mech like that, why wouldn't you alpha strike? That's your best shot. At an LRM-10, and if the commando had 
for whatever reason, decided to damn the torpedoes and just full steam ahead, you would have an SRM-6 and an SRM-4. That, you know, you would, if you're in range of the LRMs, they're at, at that short of a distance, they are within, you know, spitting distance of one another. You're you're looking at medium range on SRMs, probably short range on LRMs. That's how they caught him so off guard here. So yeah. let's just let's just presume to get the most damage out of this that the commando and the centurion looked at each other and said, we're only going to get one shot at this. And if it doesn't work, we're all dead anyway, because that thing will kill us. So we might as well just shoot everything we can shoot missile wise and, and get that, you know, as much damage in as we can. Yeah. Sound about right. It makes, it does make sense. Although I would have alpha it doesn't even matter the range. Uh, you're fighting a mad cat. You alpha because it's going. Yeah, I agree. They should have alpha if they didn't, because if the SRMs are hitting, that means that the medium lasers could have hit too. So, and certainly the the auto cannon ten. I don't know if it's an LB ten. I kind of think it's a regular auto cannon, given my theory that we're dealing with intro tech here. But if it is an LB ten, then it makes even less sense not to fire it because it it would have even better range brackets. So literally, I think they're at you know range six or so here and the lrms are maybe at you know minimum one still perfectly usable the srms are at medium range and you know i kind of think that he fired off his his auto cannon and he did it while the camera was zoomed on the missiles and that would make it make a lot more sense if all of that cat the mad cat in the rear torsos to annihilate you if you uh don't do the job right as quickly as possible okay i mean that's fair but we only see the missiles here so let's just say that's that's what they fired uh you would have to it, average expected damage on an lrm 10 is six you'll hit with six missiles most of the time so we're going to assume average expected damage actually we'll give them we'll give uh we'll give her a little bit extra there and say she hits with eight that's a five and a three group okay the mad cat can handle that he he's not in serious trouble yet let me see if i can recall the 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 timber wolf stats off the top of my head here the prime configuration nah he's not in trouble yet he's got seven in each torso on the side and nine in the center torso so he's not hurting yet but if one of those five groups for example went to a right or left torso and then the commando came behind it and struck it with several SRMs and managed to hit the same torso two times because you know you need to get eight damage to get in right uh, a five group one SRM is seven two SRMs is nine which is not totally impossible if you're firing ten of them and you seem to hit with them we're just going to assume they hit because it looks like he's standing still here. He was like getting ready to, to take a shot at that Raven. He didn't even move. So it doesn't look like they had any trouble hitting him. Yeah, not at all. OK, so it's not completely impossible to imagine that the SRM and the SRM four and six is what I meant to say hit. So, you know, you're looking at average of four and two. So that's six missiles you would get six more attempts to hit that that side torso if you know the other one had put a five group of lrms there you have six chances to hit there two times that's not completely impossible especially when you only need to roll you know six or eight whichever the one it is it's not hard so we're going to go internal damage here because to get inside the center torso would require a lot extra you would have to hit with a five group there from the centurion and yeah they're it's still going with just the missiles i know that's all we see but i really took it that he also took an ac-10 hit there because why wouldn't you fire it if you're within range to fire srms you're within range to shoot that ac-10 then the commando would have to come behind it with like three or four missiles to to get internal there so we're just going to say you got internal on one of the side torsos here because for what's about to happen that's the only thing that makes sense to me 
Otherwise, it would be really lucky to get a five grouping of LRMs. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, and then three separate rolls to the center torso for SRMs. You know, see what I'm saying? It would be really lucky to get that where you only need to do it twice on a side torso. Make sense? You see where I'm going with that? Yes. At the very least, one of these hits has to be an engine crit. Oh, well, that see that, but that's where I'm going with this because it would be easier to get in internal in a side torso with this this missile model I'll call it <laughs> than it would to get into the center torso. You see what I'm saying? So okay, he Not gets hit from the back. Thing. He turns around. Okay, so yep, they're firing again here. So yeah, it's 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 probably a commando 2D so, yeah, SRM6 and SRM4, like I said, they might have used the upgun version that has two SRM6s. Either way, I really do think that we didn't see, at the very least, the uh, Centurion firing an AC-10 at his rear. Panther, finish him. And, and see, that was the arm that he didn't take damage to, I think, when he was running. So why wouldn't he shoot his medium laser like he shot before? Well, he couldn't. I think he took that clan ER large laser hit to that other arm, which took out his medium laser that was in that arm. There and is. down he goes. So let's talk about what happened here. See how the damage on the, the back torso is visible here? They have yes. gone great lengths to make it look wrecked. So that's how I know the hunchback didn't hit him before, because if it had hit him, they would have gone to some lengths to make it look like he's been damaged. But I mean, I guess if you want to call that now that the, the plot armor has been thrown away because the plot necessitates us killing you at this stage, you know, we make it look ruined. But yeah, it just stands to reason that the hunchback didn't hit him with any of all that other crap because they didn't go to any great length to make it look wrecked where they have here. So down he goes. Um, if also, we're internal, you know, I was going to say, which also, I mean, how many times have you thought, oh, I got you now on an AC 20 roll and then just whiffed it so many times. So yeah. many, even with really good gunnery numbers, it still oh my happens God. with AC 20s. Yeah, that's true too. I've missed so many AC 20 hits. I've been like, oh, I need a four. Yeah. Yeah. I, I one time threw a pair of dice into Lake Eufaula because I needed to roll five on an AC-20 to hit and rolled three. Yeah, that sucks. I've had that happen, too. Really sucks. So It sounds like a good reason to banish a pair of dice yes, forever. Yes, they, they are. I'm done with them, but let's, let's talk about what happened here. If you're internal on the Mad Cat, on a right or left torso, which is what we're looking at here, because that was that one of one of those two would be the easiest of the the three. Um, mm -hmm. We'll just assume left, I guess. Uh, actually, wait a minute. You might be able to get an explosion. Okay, we can make the explosion possible because uh, let, let's just animate that real fast. Boom. Why did that happen? If you're internal on a right or left torso, you have the possibility of hitting LRM ammo. And we know that the Mad Cat did not expend its entire complement of LRMs here. We have, at best, five turns, you know, of, of fire here. And it has six, you know, shots of LRMs. But we know it didn't shoot it all the time. So I, I would venture to say that by the time this happens, the Mad Cat's LRM bays were at least 75% full. Yeah. And you get internal, Agreed. all you need to do here with the, the Raven is point the SRM2 and, you know, get it in just the right spot. So, yes, that is a little bit of luck on the, the part of the spheroids here, which further underscores just how crazy. So that's either an ammo explosion, which would sort of make sense. I mean, clan ammo bins have case but that doesn't stop it from damaging the torso that it's in so it's possible he took an engine crit um to say the other torso or 
if I am right, you know, he is much more damaged from taking not just the LRM, the SRMs, and the autocannon. Who knows, they might have fired off lasers too while we were fixated on the missiles in flight. So, yeah, it, it could be that it hit the ammo bin. It could be that they hit the ammo bin and it's a, crit you know, a catastrophic engine failure. Think about the video from the MechWarrior 3 intro. Now, uh, reading what I have uh, for an upcoming episode of The Arsenal, uh, fusion engines can't go nuclear. They're not going to explode like a nuclear weapon. Uh, they're going to fail, and there could be a pretty big conventional explosion, like what we see here, once all that plasma just starts shooting everywhere if there's a catastrophic engine failure. So that could be another one, too. It could be the engine took several hits all at once, and it's having a catastrophic failure, and it's blowing up. Easy, irresponsible it was to authorize this fucking invasion <laughs> because the guy called you sir yeah that's that's i yeah no i don't i don't i don't buy that when i don't buy oh i have at least three drop ships packed with mech warriors equipment technicians everything that's involved in a planetary invasion and i'm gonna call go before all the sectors are green yeah no i even if she's a Lyran and she bought her position, that would be terribly irresponsible. I, I have a hard time with that, especially with this being the Federated Commonwealth at this point. M maybe if these guys were just Lyrans and you had a commander that was like, yes, yes, launch the invasion. I don't want to be delayed with my upcoming parade, you know, but yeah. I that was a terribly irresponsible move. I don't see a a, a son's commander doing that. Only a Liren that bought their position. Oh uh, man! Okay, the, the, the so I have, I have a head cannon about Raven. that. Okay, hmm. let, let me finish this. about that. Let me okay, finish this on. thought, and then then you can throw that out there for the insane luck of that Raven to throw just the SRM two. We don't see him shoot anything else. That Raven has other things. It has like a medium laser, doesn't it? It can fire it yes. more. You get, you'd you think, okay, I've got one opportunity to knock this thing over now. I'll fire all this shit. No, he doesn't do that. He just shoots the SRM too. And it just manages to hit the right torso, whatever one they... See, yeah, uh, I don't think he shot an SRM-6. I mean, it would... It, it, I really do think this is a Raven that they stripped everything out of and up armored for this mission. Because this seems like they're these guys are sort of like the disposable guys. You know, everybody that's important are sitting on the dropships. These are guys that they threw in here to be like, yeah, we're going to sneak you on to Port Arthur somehow. And you're going to run around in clan occupied territory you know, being recon. And if we lose you guys, well, you know... Better to lose you guys than, you know, people that are important with really good mechs. So that's another reason I think we're only dealing with intro tech here. Stuff that the commanders could afford to throw into the field and say, if we lose it, we lose it. Opened up. Because they, they first had to do that. That Lemony Snicket series of unfortunate events had to happen. And then it had to on this is on the next movement phase now because it has to turn around <laughs> to take this shot. We go back to the weapon attack phase. He only declares the one weapon. He fires it and it just goes -de 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 -de, and just manages to scoop the exact location that they tore open the turn before. And bang, we get the ammo explosion on critical hit. You have to roll at least one. So you have to hit that torso, whatever one that the team before you opened up, and then you have to roll at least eight, and then you have to roll low on the left torso or right torso, whichever one it is. And if it's the right torso, you have actually better opportunities to do this. So let's just assume it's the right torso then, because there is a machine gun ammo slot there and a LRM ammo slot there in the low group in the two and three slot. So you have double the opportunity to blow the ammo if you can get one critical hit or multiple the, the more the better obviously but you have to roll low group two or three 
and bang, you will get it either machine gun ammo explosion or an LRM ammo explosion. And that will produce this result. Okay. So Thank you for we, following so me on that train it. of thought. I apologize for that long just I was like I was like in the plane, right? And I was flying into the, <laughs> the fucking airport. I'm like, hold on, bitches. I gotta get the landing gear tap. Just give me one second. I'm almost there. Yeah. So we so flying we into the hangar. Assume... Woo! Close the doors. All right. We so, all right, go ahead. Yeah. We definitely have to assume that they stripped all of the armor off of the rear arc with that with that volley of missiles. So I'm going to call that that they got really lucky on their grouping rolls and rolled perfect every single missile hit, and there is just no armor left on the rear of that Mad Cat anymore. No, I, I don't think they had to get insanely lucky there. I think if the Centurion smashes with the LRM-10s, which she did, and you just hit average expected damage, you don't even have to go above six, but okay, you hit with eight out of ten. If just five points, you know, one of the five groups goes to a left or right torso, in this case, we'll say right, like I just said, um, then that one point can go anywhere else. It does, or three points can go anywhere else. It doesn't matter. The Centurion, or not Centurion, excuse me, the Commando just has to come behind and smash with those two SRMs and just get average expected damage out of them. You know, uh, which four if we and are, two, six missiles. If two of those... Which if we are going that these guys have 30, 50 tech, he could be rocking... SRM6 and SRM4 with Artemis as well. So that's plausible as well. I, I don't know. I Like I said, I tend to think these guys are rocking 3025, and maybe this is the variant with the two SRM6s, but again, I think he shot the auto cannon at the very least, because why wouldn't you? And we did have a few seconds there of watching the missiles in flight, and the missiles are going to be slower than any laser or auto cannon round. So there might have been that second or so that we were fixated on the missiles that the auto cannon and lasers could have hit. Can strike that right torso that the Centurion just hit, it will ping, go internal. One critical hit, you know, could, you know, now he's, he's internal. He gets no crits, right? The guy turns around, the Raven fires the SRMs, hits the same right torso, critical hit, machine gun ammo or LRM ammo, kablam. That's the sequence of events. That's what has to happen. You really or only both. need one or the other. Right. Yeah, you only, but, really but only e need one or the other, but if you hit both, boom. <laughs> either either of those would produce that result. So I don't I don't think this is insanely lucky on anyone but the Raven's part. The Raven is the is the guy that gets all the wow, this was the silver bullet. This was the the dart you threw blindfolded and just happened to hit in the right spot. Because if it, it if that he only like I say only declares one weapon, if that weapon had hit anywhere else, this fight would be still going. It would not be over, That's and I can't say that it would yeah. end the same. And I agree with that too. Even with them being kind of surrounded and trapped in there, and assuming that the inner sphere mechs moved in and started doing physicals on him and stuff, I that would be a rough fight. Like I said, I don't. If I was that mad cat pilot and you know granted i'm kind of inner sphere i probably would have disengaged and my first response would have been to let someone know that we have inner sphere max in the area because if you have one lance there's probably more than that which is another reason i think he was shooting those machine guns but yeah to get that would have had to have played out especially if if we're not going with being hit in the rear even if you go, okay, he, they shot every weapon they had to get everything. Nothing hit an arm, nothing hit a leg, everything hit those rear torsos. I mean, how many times have you lined up the perfect rear shot and thought, oh, yeah, we're going to do some damage. And you shot a bunch of weapons and somehow you might have gotten, you know, one on a rear torso, but everything else hit the legs and arms. Like, it happens. So... Yeah, either this was really, really lucky, which it could have happened. More weapons than that were shot, and they were still pretty lucky. But either way, for this to all happen so quickly, yeah. So That's one of the no. reasons why I wanted to say earlier that I'm pretty sure that Panther is an elite pilot. 
I'm pretty sure he's 2-2, two, two, if not 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I don't buy that. The, the, the Mad Cat was standing still. He hit him twice, presumably, with SRM2s. Uh, uh, I think he's an elite pilot and has average gunnery, like a four gunnery and like a three um, piloting. Like, that's what makes sense. He's a recon mech, and if I am right about his Raven being up-armored, that would make sense, too, because his job isn't to do damage. His job is to run around and see stuff. And if he is rocking EW gear, you know, whether it be literally EW gear or, you know, ECM and, and um, Active Probe, then that would make sense, too. His job is not to do damage. His job is to run around and be recon. And like I said, I think he is. They've stripped the equipment out of this Raven and up armored it, is what I'm assuming from what I've seen in this. Okay, he he could be, and that may be why he makes his skid checks with with such ease. Right. So as far as the beginning of the video, I have some uh, thoughts about everything. All right. So we know that at this point in the lore. We are dealing with the Federated Commonwealth rather than the Lyran Commonwealth and the Federated Sons. This is most likely the first time that Colonel Reese has ever worked with former AFFS. Okay. And there it is. You can I see it right right idea. there on the yeah. left of the screen. You can see. Yep. I had to uh, zoom in some when I used this footage so that you couldn't see that. When I said that it was uh, Federated Sons coming in, that you wouldn't see the uh, Federated Commonwealth logo. But I think I'm going to go ahead and call it there. Um, they go on to talk some about who Reese is, who the Mech Commander is, and some more about the lore, which is interesting. But if you guys want to see that, go ahead and take a look. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this. Hopefully, when they do my favorite intro video, I'll be on with Battlebound. And... Uh, Hopefully that happens, and until then, uh, let me know what you think of this video, if you think uh, they were up close, as Battlebound thinks, or if they were further away, as it's my theory. Which versions of these mechs uh, do you think they were using? Uh, leave that below. Thank you again for giving me the opportunity to entertain you, and as always, I hope you enjoy the battle reps that are to come. Hello, this is Adam with Dream Made Productions. Thank you for watching my content. It really means a lot that you have given me the chance to entertain you. If you would like to support the channel, please visit my Patreon at patreon.com slash dreammadeproductions, linked below. Also below is a link for PayPal, or links if you would like to send crypto, if that's more your thing. Please know any amount that you give will be cherished and used to upgrade equipment and improve the channel. You can also help the channel by subscribing, turning on notifications, liking, commenting, and sharing my channel with anyone you think might be interested. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you enjoy the battle reps that are to come.